What's up guys, I'm Nick, and this is Build Dad Build. Or as Snoop Dogg would say, what's hizzle shizzle? Yeah, dizzle, I'm about to bounce to the spizzle and get a 40 izzle, then I'll be at my baby mizzles. You feel what I'm sizzle? A show. A shizzle, my nizzle. Today I'm gonna let you in on a little secret that people that own laser engravers don't want you to know. And that secret is how to get the bikini line real good. <laughs> and what we're gonna talk about today is how to get your optimal engrave and cut settings for different kinds of material. Using these test files to dial your laser in is gonna take your laser engraving and cutting up to 11. Now these files will be available for free. I will link that down below, but what I wanna do is show you how to manipulate these files as well because not all materials are made equally. Mainly when we make one of these files, we make it with wood in mind, but there's a lot of other stuff out there that you can engrave, so you may have to tweak your settings. What I wanna to do today is take you through how to make one of these so you know how to change the settings in there if you need to do it. Let's jump into it. Today, we're gonna to be doing this test grid in Lightburn. This is the only way I know how to do this where you're not manually setting each individual cut or engrave point. First, we're gonna start out with the box. Let's go ahead and make this 400 by 400. This is gonna probably be kind of huge. I'm gonna go back and forth between millimeters and inches because I got my machine here set in millimeters. But the grids I have available for you are five inches by five inches. Okay, so the quick setup is just something that says material type, colon, and let's say this is three millimeter pine. On the test files, these will be blank and you can change them to whatever they are. And then laser type, and let's just say this is the X-Tool D1 Pro 20 watt. Put that at the top. A lot of people like to leave this as a line, so it goes a little faster, but I like to be able to see it. So I usually turn it into a fill and put it on its own layer. And then as you can see here, I already labeled this layer labels. If you don't know how to change these out here, if you go in, you just change it right here on the, the, on the name portion and I've already got this set to a speed of 80 millimeters per second and 40 watt power. Now this is where you're going to come and change things. So if you were doing something that was like harder, like let's say you're doing like purple heart or something like that, like a, like a harder wood, you may have to increase the, the power or the or slow down the speed a little bit to be able to see your labels. So we're going to say speed and this one is millimeters per second. Hold the shift, rotate up. I'm going to do power and I'm going to bring this down here. Okay. So now we're going to go one. And what I like to do in order to be able to keep these evenly spaced is I'm going to bring this guy down here and then I'm going to use the array tool and I'm just going to say two, three, four. Okay. We're just going to do five and five to make this a little easier. Then we go ahead and space them out to what we like. Usually we want to get a decent amount of space in there. Let's go 18, 18 is fine. Obviously you're going to, this is going to be more <laughs> and in the final thing, bring these guys over here. And then I'm just going to come in with my, my text tool and I'm going to change these out. And then across the bottom, I'm going to do my power. I'm going to do it the same way. I'm probably going to jump these up by more. Let's stick with five for those as well. One, two, three, four, five. Space them out a little bit. Okay. And at this point, you realize that this power thing is probably too far away and things like that. Again, this is just for an example. So I'm going to make this 50. So those are our labels. Now I want to I want to lay out my first row. In this example, we're going to use squares as the cutouts. I use puzzle pieces in the actual file because the laser can do corners really well. When it starts doing circles and corners and whatnot, that's where it gets a little wonky. You're going to get a better idea of how clean of a cut you're going to get if you use something like this. But for this example, we're just going to use squares because they're quicker. Okay, so I'm going to come up here and grab me a square and we're going to use the array tool just to go, just do our X column for now. And you'll see why in a second. Let's make those a little smaller. So let's put all of these on a new layer. Put them on two. And then just so you guys are familiar, we're gonna go ahead and say, all right, this is gonna be one millimeter per second, millimeter per second. And then we're gonna change this to one millimeter. We're gonna set this to 50% power. So basically what we've done is we've set this entire row to be at 50% power, but that's not what we want. So what we're gonna do is come over here to shape properties, which may not show up for you. You may not have this tab here. If you don't, you're gonna go up to window, which obviously is outside of the frame for this, but you're just gonna come down and you're gonna shape properties and pull that up and it'll, it, I think it just drops it in here, but you can pull it over here if not. So now you have your shape properties. If I click on one of these, 
you'll see that this is 50. But if I click on the 60, the 60 is up to 50, right? But basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this one that says it's 60, I'm gonna change it to 60. And then this one, I'm gonna change to 70. So now that we've set those, we won't have to set them again. Now I can come in here and I can make my array go up to the rest of our deals, which looks like it's gonna be more like that. Now, when I come in here, when I wanna change this, I'm gonna select this. I'm gonna come over to cuts and layers. I'm going to change to a new layer. So I'm gonna change layer three. We're gonna come in here. We're gonna make this, our speed is two, two millimeters per second. And if you come in here and you click on this, and you check your shape properties, that's 50%, that's 60, that's 70, that's 80, and that's 90. And now we're on the green layer, so we're moving two millimeters per second, but don't pay attention to this number now because that is the max amount it will go, but we've already changed that in the shape properties. And then you're just gonna continue on. Now, I'm gonna move these manually, Sometimes, sometimes you may want to just sketch out the whole thing before you move anything. So once you get to this point, if this is how you want your grid to be, then what you're going to do is you're going to come up here to your outer cut and you're going to move that all the way down here because we want the outer cut to be last. And then you can save this as a light burn file. So you can just come up again. You can't see it, but if I hit save or if I hit file, I come down to save as, and I can name it and save it off and then use it whenever I need to. Um, the, your other option is to come over here and put it in your library and you could just have those files in your in your library for whenever you wanna run a new material. And, and then that's it. And then you just wanna run, run it on your laser and you're gonna look something like this. Let me grab this one. So the main things when you're looking at cuts is you want to look at the back as well because I don't really have any I don't really have any on here, but if you're getting burning around the back, then that's really not a good setting. You want to have a clean cut all the way through. And then your graves, some of this is going to come down to being a little bit of a personal preference. If I look at this, I'm probably leaning towards 70 to 80 in the 200 zone here. But one personal preference, two, this is just supposed to get you 90% there. You're still gonna have to tweak your settings a little bit after you get dialed into kind of where you need to be. That's another reason why it's great to know how to do this yourself. Remember these files are available down below. And if it's still before June 2nd, I'm still giving away a trip to go to LaserCon in Las Vegas at the end of June. I will link that link down below as well. Make sure to go sign up because I've really only had probably about 80 people sign up so far. So the odds of winning are definitely in your favor. If you're watching this after June 2nd, obviously the contest is over, but you can still pick up tickets to LaserCon and I would love to see you there. And on that note, woo!